introduction to semantic search. Uh, my husband's a linguist and he offered me an incredibly long and drawn out definition of the word semantic, which I declined to bring with me. Um, essentially, it's related to meaning. It's not the meaning of life, for those who are Douglas Adams fans. Um, it's related essentially to things rather than strings. And this ties in completely with what Paul was talking about, about keywords just being, you know, becoming less and less uh, critical when it comes to talking about your marketing. So don't think in terms of keyword strings anymore. Think in terms of things, stuff that you do. So, yeah, it's all very well saying things. If we were down in the B2C room, we'd, we'd be talking about product markup and all that sort of thing. But for B2B, actually, in a way, it's actually simpler. Because what you're talking about in a B2B environment is what is your business? What do you do? Where is your expertise? It really is as simple as that. So instead of thinking in terms of a big long list of keywords, um, like on the right, start thinking in terms of your software, your places, um, your product, your service offerings. Those are the things that you need to start thinking about and focusing on in order to become hummingbird ready and hummingbird advanced. So, taking a step back, what actually is Google Hummingbird anyway, uh, and what isn't it? What it is, is a completely new core algorithm for Google, and it's important to understand this. It's not an add-on in the same way that our old friends Panda and Penguin were. They were bolt-ons, essentially. The best analogy that I've ever heard for it is actually, if you think of Google's algorithm as a car, which may sound fruity, but bear with me, um, Google, Google Hummingbird is replacing the engine of the car. Panda and Penguin were replacing wing mirrors and doors and things, but at the end of the day, if you want the car to drive well, which obviously Google does, you have to replace the core functionality, which is the engine. But that does mean that um, all the doors and things that you've already replaced are still there. So the Panda and Penguin rules still apply, and that's really, really important to recognise. It's not all the old rules are out the window. Those still apply. You still need your good content. You still need a clean site, all the rest of that stuff. Hummingbird is just... It's a new thing, but it completely changes the way that actually Google is looking at sites at its core. So, as I've said, Google and Panda still apply. Um, sorry, Penguin and Panda still apply. There's no change in the rules there. We don't <coughs> want spammy links. We don't want things in content, all that stuff that you're probably all sick of hearing about. Um, <coughs> what we need now is, everyone's going to grow, content. And everyone keeps going on content, content, content. Bored now. Content really is what it's about. And again, it ties back to this idea of getting away from keywords and towards conversations. What are people talking about that is relevant to your brand and to your offering? So what do they ask? Um, where do they ask it? What do they talk about when they're in the mood to talk about what they're going to buy from you? Now, the best way that I can think of to do this in terms of um, looking at content for B2B is to talk not just about your business, which, as Matt was talking about, is kind of the conversion end of saying, hey, look how great we are, buy our stuff. It's about talking around the idea of your business. So if you're an accountant who does tax services, don't just talk about how great your tax services are. Talk about your um, you know, local news and accounting, industry-relevant stuff. You're all B2B professionals. You keep an eye on this stuff anyway. I don't think there's anyone in the room who would say, I have no idea what's going on in my industry right now. At least I hope there isn't. Um, so you've already got this sort of data and this awareness on hand. You can use it. And this brings us to the cake. Hopefully no one's too hungry because it's before lunch. The way I always think of content proportionality for Hummingbird is to think of your website as the cake and the search engine as the menu. How would you describe the flavour of a cake, generally? If it's mainly a chocolate cake, as I think that one is, you're going to say, well, you know what, that's a chocolate cake. If you start adding a few cherries into it, it might become, eventually, a cherry and chocolate cake, and people will look at it and go, yeah, that's a cherry and chocolate cake. If it's mainly cherries with a few sprinkles of chocolate on top, people go, oh, well, that's a cherry cake with some chocolate. And it reads differently on the menu. Now replace the flavours of the cake with the content on your website and the analogy becomes slightly less loopy. So you're going back to the example of the accountant with um, the tax <coughs> flavour. He wants to be an accountancy and tax flavoured website. He wants to appear high on Google's menu, as it were, for terms related to accountancy and tax and so forth. So if he produces a lot of content 
around accountancy, not just to do with tax, but commentary on industry issues, um, discussing things that have come up in the news, going away and sort of, you know, just generally talking, as I said, around the business and around his area of expertise, his website and his whole web presence, because it doesn't just have to be on site, it can cover your social platforms and everything else, his whole web presence becomes more tax accountancy flavoured. Google Hummingbird recognises this and starts to push him up higher. But at no point there, you'll notice, have I mentioned the phrase keywords. Well, I have now, obviously. <laughs> so, again, it's, it, literally, it's pushing the keywords out the window and thinking in terms of topics. And I'll, I'll talk about that more when we get to kind of the, the next step. So, rather than getting into lots of abstract talk about algorithms and all sorts of nonsense that nobody here is really interested in, I know I am, I'm not particularly, um, what do you actually want to do now in order to become hummingbird ready? So, there are two problems that come um, with adjusting your business and your search marketing to get towards Hummingbird Ready. The first one is what to create. So you've been told, everyone's telling you, so they're blue in the face, you need content. Right, brilliant, okay, you go away, you get your budget for content marketing, you get your resource, now what? That's your first problem. The second problem. The second problem is targeting it, and I absolutely love this quote. Getting information off the internet is like taking a drink from a fire hydrant. Um, it doesn't matter where you go, whether it's social media, whether it's search engines, Google, or anyone else, you get floods of information everywhere. So that is where knowing where your audience is and knowing where your target personas for your marketplace are helps you to get the information that you want to get in front of them in front of them. So, solving problem one, producing content. This is actually the, probably the easiest part in many cases, although that may sound mad, because <coughs> at the end of the day, you're all professional services firms, you've got a wealth of expertise on hand. Um, Nick has already talked earlier about leveraging your staff. Everyone in here ha can probably talk endlessly about their topic where they work. I know I go on at length to, about SEO to anyone who will listen, and quite a few people who'd rather not. You can leverage that. Start talking about your business topics. Go out to your staff, talk to your partners, talk to your partner agencies. Any way you can get this information is brilliant. Get it optimised, get it interlinked with your lead generating pages so that people who come in at the awareness stage can see clearly where they should go next. Now Matt was absolutely right in that you shouldn't start pushing people down the conversion funnel 100%, but there's no reason that you can't make people aware that you're not Wikipedia. And this is a common um, trap that a lot of businesses fall into, especially in the B2B arena, where they produce these beautiful knowledge bases and blogs and thought leadership, and it's all absolutely brilliant content. And people land on the site and think, right, fantastic, I'll, I'll just bookmark this next to Wikipedia. And they're not actually aware that there's a business behind it, uh, which is obviously a bit of a problem, because at the end of the day, long term, medium term, whenever term, you need to generate leads out of it. So leverage your in-house expertise, get it in there, get it optimised, don't forget those short-term benefits, because there is no reason that someone couldn't land on a thought leadership piece. Go for those short-term benefits. If, on the other hand, they land and they don't, that's okay, because you've given them the information, you've started down that road that Matt was talking about, about building trust. So you, you win either way. The next problem is the targeting. It's getting your drink out of the fire hydrant. So, tailor your content delivery to your audience. And Nick, to be honest, has gone into this far better than I could have, talking about personas, listening to conversations, keeping an eye on industry news, listening to your current clients and customers, listen to your potential customers, go out and have coffee with people, talk about what they're doing in the industry. Again, you're all professional services firms, you do this anyway, your sales staff do this anyway. Get everyone on board, sit down and say, right, guys, what are our customers talking about? What are our prospects talking about? Write strategically for your audience, rather than writing strategically using keywords for search engines. Good SEO and good search performance will naturally follow. But if you get out the, the methodology of thinking purely in terms of we've got to go this keyword and then this keyword, and focus instead on the kind of broader theme of your business and how you would describe your business to someone else. Because if someone says to you, what do you do for a living, does anyone here just sit and spout a list of keywords off? I know I, I wouldn't, and I work in SEO, so if anyone's likely to. No, you don't. You talk around it. You say, well, I do this, and I do... That's how Hummingbird and Google wants you to start talking about your business on your website, on your social platforms, on your content distribution, however you do it. 
getting a bit boring and technical just for a minute, which is my first love, as the guys at the back will tell you, I'm a bit of a technical buff. So um, there are some technical things you can do, even in B2B. Now, if you were down in the B2C room, we'd be talking about product markup and all that sort of thing, which I'm sure people have heard of if you've ever done anywhere near e-commerce. But actually, that's not just for the B2C market. There is lots of rich markup, semantic markup opportunities for websites that are service-based and that are B2B-based. Don't write this sort of code-level technical stuff off just because you think, well, I'm not an e-commerce website. What's that got to do with me? It has loads to do with you. If, I'm not going to get into detail here because I will go on for absolutely hours and Ellie and Rachel will come and slap me. But there are so many opportunities. So if you're not sure, ask someone. Talk to one of the guys at the back. Come and have a chat with me. Um, there's, there's so much you can do that is, is still technical to help mark up your website in a code way to actually say, hey, Google, this bit means this, this bit means this, and here's the content as well. And if you do that, suddenly, Hummingbird's fantastic. I know exactly what bits of this site are. I know that those are the breadcrumbs, that that's the contact form, and all the rest of it. And I know what this site's about because I can look at the flavour of the site, going back to the cake, and say, hey, I know that this site is about accountancy. And, oh, they seem to have quite a lot of content on tax. Presumably they do well for tax. And it pushes you up. So what's next? Getting out the crystal ball. Um, this is actually a patent that was recently granted uh, to Google on search query result based on topic. I haven't put the full paper in there because it's extremely long and very boring. It's online if you want to look it up. This is the next extension of Hummingbird, and things like this are going to become more and more common. Again, keywords are going down. Google is starting to pay more and more attention to these topic areas. So it's no longer interested in your big list of keywords. It wants to know what topic you're in. So it wants to know at the first division, are you B2B or are you B2C? Well, obviously, if you're up here, you're in B2B, unless you're lost, in which case, I'm sorry, this means very little to you. <laughs> Um, then it wants to know what sector you're in. Are you financial services? Are you agriculture? Are you customer services, property? Whatever you're in. And, it's, and it starts breaking it down like that and it's going to just become more and more granular because Google is one of the biggest data sources on the planet. And it has all this information that it can use and it wants to use it to improve its algorithm because that way it gets better search results, it gets more people coming to it and it can make more money off things like AdWords and things that I'm not allowed to talk about. So topics are the next thing and actually the great thing about looking forward to things like topic-based searching is if you're acting towards content promotionality and towards being hummingbird ready, you're already on the right track. You just need to keep doing it, do it bigger and better, and just keep growing. So actually, if you, this is the great thing about the way it's, it's going. You're, you're, you're already there. If you're doing it right now, you're going to be doing it right in the future. There's no more gaming the search engines. There's no more black hats at least not successful black hats, there's still are black hats out there. So just bear that in mind when you're thinking this, is, this isn't just search planning for now, this is search planning for five, ten years, possibly even beyond. And it's, it all boils down to things like conversation, you've seen the advances, things like wearable tech, um, those of you that are using things like Siri or anything else on mobile phones, obviously device uh, unification is becoming more and more prevalent, people are starting to think, oh, you know, about my mobile and this. Again, it all boils down to customer conversations. Mm -hmm. People are getting so used now to just going to search engines, instead of saying things like, you know, property in wherever, they're saying things like, where's my nearest restaurant? And Google's telling them. So if you want to be pushed high for things like that, you need to make sure that your content proportionality matches up so that if someone says, where's my nearest accountancy firm, for example, I'm stuck in accountancy today, I'm not sure why, um, Google goes, right, well, actually, I know that this accountant's here because they've got the semantic markup that's telling me where the location is, and I know that they're an accountant and they seem to know a lot about tax law, and, oh, this person previously searched for some information about tax law, so actually, what they want is a tax law account, and suddenly you're being pushed up high through search results, not because you've gone away and built zillions of links, not because you've got incredibly keyword-optimised pages, <laughs> but because you have helped Google understand what your business is about. So, to summarise, I had to have one of these one boring slides that had nothing but text on it. Don't throw out your keywords just yet, but do start thinking about concepts and topics rather than keyword lists. The reason I say that is that you can actually still use things like the good old keyword planner to give you ideas. People can go in and you can see what volume there is behind um, something like, look for the hows and the what type phrases. 
How do I file a tax return? There, I don't have accounting again. How do I rent a service department? How do I, what do I? All those sorts of phrases, you can still go and look up the keyword wrong.